Hey everyone, this is Dennis from Refused. You're watching Heavy Consequence on Consequence of Sound. I hope you dig it. Hey everyone, it's Spencer from Heavy Consequence at Consequence of Sound. I'm here with the legendary Dennis Lixon of Refused. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So the last time I saw you guys play, um, it was last year at a Sonic Temple. It got canceled because of uh, high winds. Yeah. And then I get a text while Joan Jett is on stage. Uh, hey, come check out Refused and the Distillers at this tiny club in downtown Columbus, Ohio. So I'm like, okay, I got to see this. And uh, I caught most of Foo Fighters set, uh, headlining at Sonic Temple. And then I just hightailed it down to that club. And I got to say, that was an amazing show. Like, maybe 150, 200 people packed into this tiny yeah. club. And you can talk about just like making that decision to play that show and, and, and that experience. Well, <laughs> it was a great show, yeah. It's one of those deals where you're like, you're on tour and you're like, you're playing. And there's, I mean, you know, you come over from Sweden and you're there. And so that day we're just waiting all day and they're telling us like, your your stage is closed, like nothing's happening. and we'll know more in an hour and then all day. And we started like, if this is not happening, we still want to play. It's not, you know, you know, so, so, and we looked at the lineup and like, oh, this distillers, we, we should do something with the distillers. And then they came up and they're like, do you want to do this show? And then someone contacted someone and then it was like, yeah, it's happening. Just bring your stuff. And we got in a van and we drove over there and it was a fantastic show. Yeah. So the latest <laughs> album is war music. And, uh, Excellent album, and Thank I, you. you know, when we re reviewed it last year, I was talking about how, you know, the great greatest punk music almost comes in a reaction to what's going on in the world. Mm. You know, right now we have Trump in office. There's, you know, kind of a socioeconomic oppression going on in other countries, and I was actually kind of surprised by how few bands <laughs> were reacting to you know, Trump in office and all the stuff going yeah. on. And then you came out with this album and I said, this is what like punk rock needs right now. Yeah. Can you talk about that idea of writing songs and performing songs that are reaction to, to what's going on in the world? Well, I mean, that, that's kind of what we grew up on, you know, like, like the idea that music has like a, a, a bigger meaning than just, you know, going to a show or listening. I mean, so, so for us, it's always been like that. Like the first so the first demo we talked about politics and then as we progressed we got more and more into politics and it got more and more radical and as the music became more radical the politics became more radical so so for us it's always been like a part of um, the, the language of the band if that makes sense mm -hmm. like like how you when you write a refuse song there's certain like elements of it that 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 just that just the, a part of the DNA and the politics is an important part of that but actually, after we'd done Freedom, we started talking about like what, what the next record should be. And at first, we had some different ideas. But then, I mean, they was like, well, the, the, the state of the world right now, like with everything that go, goes on in Europe and in the States and Brexit, and you have all these things, like we need to, to, to make a record that kind of really reflects the times we live in, because that's what great art should do. And um, I, I guess as an artist, you can do go to path you can you can sort of reflect your world and your surroundings or you can go total escapism which i think most people choose nowadays because the world is so messed up that maybe it's like you know this and why do you want another band telling you about how messed up but, but i mean for us there's never been an option to that that's that's kind of what we do it's in our dna um i think what it is because <clears throat> we started doing this a long time ago we started talking about politics and being really radical before social media so there wasn't that much of a backlash in the 90s. I mean, sure, there were people that didn't like our politics and some people thought we weren't political enough, you know, like, or we're on the long, mm -hmm. we're on victory records. So you're, of course, sellouts and you know, that whole conversation. Um, but it was also a, a world where we're, we're, we're part of a world where, where politics is just, uh, it's just a part of that scene. And I think today for a lot of young people, if you want to talk about politics, and, and um, a whole world of music and communication is dictated by social media. And if you dip your foot into politics and you get these enormous backlashes from both the right and the left, you're like, yeah, I'm not going to touch that. That's, that seems super scary. And I mean, also with, with the margins of, of uh, 
how difficult it is to play music and make kind of a living of that. I think a lot of people are just like, I'm not going to talk about politics because then, I mean, when we grew up on stage, there's always someone leaving the show because we're, we're talking about politics and, you know, some people don't want to risk that. And, and also I think the social media thing where, where they meant, I mean, I'm glad we did that in the nineties. So now when we come out and we get backlash on Facebook and Instagram, we're like, yeah, that's a part of what we do. You know, that's a, that's part of a, but I, I, it's scary for a lot of people, I think. Yeah. And let's talk about a few of the songs on War Music. The first single was Blood Red. Yep. A very dynamic song right off the bat. Uh, you know, there's a line in there about the 1%. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, can you talk about that song just a little bit, both musically and lyrically? I think it's one. Of, it's the first song we wrote for this record. And it's one of those songs, it's like a, you know, statement of intent. It's like, well, I mean, Blood Red, it's, it's funny because... Red, of course, in Europe is, is you're a socialist, mm -hmm. and here it's different because like the the red states are the Republicans <laughs> and the blue states, so it's a bit weird, confusing. <laughs> but blood red is basically like like we're true to our ideals, and I think also musically there's a lot of a tro throwback to the '90s kind of hardcore thing that we were a part of. So it's like to put that out as the first song, it's like yeah, it's like a statement of intent. Like here we are, like we're true to these ideas, and we talk about like a once again, the redistribution mm -hmm. of wealth and the one percent making, you know, they're they're making money off of our, our work, and then we're like, we might need to do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another song I really dig on the album is "Violent Reaction." Yeah. Uh, that's another kind of a crushing track, and uh, just like to hear more about that one as well. That, actually, it's funny because I mean, it, it is a song about like, if you break it down, it's about the idea that we. We're imprisoned in, in a world where where everybody keeps telling us that there's nothing, there's nothing outside of this. So don't 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 even dream about something different. Mm -hmm. And when when you are so brainwashed and so imprisoned, you don't even have a language to articulate your sense of not being free. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of based on that. But it's funny because when I started writing the the, the lyrics to it, it's like uh, you know. I, I was, a lot of it was kind of based on this idea of, of, of a populist uh, politician. Mm -hmm. So like I, I, I started with like the Donald Trump idea of like, like this weird snake charmer sort of person that's kind of like, a, you know, it's like a weird used car salesman. Uh, but then it ended up being more about like the, the, the idea, like how we imprison ourselves within a system. We were like, oh, this is the only system we have. So sort of, you know, like... We we choose this prison because because we don't we don't know how to how to express an idea of something different. Mm. Yeah. And uh, one other song uh, I wanted to touch upon was uh, the final track, "Economy of Death." Yeah. Uh, another song that really <laughs> st uh, stuck out to me. If, again, if you don't mind, just speaking on that one as well. No, I mean it's super easy. It's <laughs> like, I like "Economy of Death" for us equals capitalism equals the idea that we live in a world where where we are bought and sold in, in my mind and how we see the world if you see where structurally capitalism as an idea and as an economic system is the problem i mean capitalism is the idea that um, money needs to grow so then if money needs to grow of course the auto factories move out of detroit but that's capitalism it's not like that the the gm motors are are, are evil it's just like it's more profitable to move the factory over here. But then people keep voting for that system and saying like, oh, you know, like we believe in freedom, we believe in this, but capitalism don't, it doesn't have a conscience, it doesn't have morals, it does not care about you. It just cares about these profit margins. It cares about like the 1% that benefits from it. So it's a song about that. It's a typical refuse song. <laughs> <laughs> it's another typical refuse song. 